Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. We have a saying here at the Wayward Outreach that once you watch once, you're now part of the family. We know that God is ready to do something amazing in your life, so check out today's service. Hello everyone here at the world. We got a group here, our men's home is here, and everyone at home, we're so glad that you're tuning in. And, and we have Ivan Tate all the way from, is George, it's Atlanta, right? Georgia. That's Georgia, yeah. And Gavin was here two weeks ago, and what a blessing he was to us as a church. You know, and what we're doing as we come together is we're hearing God's word. And you know what God's word leads us to? It leads us to his presence. And we need his presence to perform our, to our maximum potential. So many of us right now say, man, I want to see more in my life. Just like, like okay, oh, Derek Faison was talking about, God wants increase in our lives. And God sure does want increase in our lives. But one of the ways that he produces increase is with his seed. After seed comes a harvest. And what God produces is a heart. This is what God wants to do. He gives us his word so we can produce everything that he wants us to produce in life. So we're so glad that you're tuning in. And today we're going to be, what are we going to be talking about today? Tonight, we're t today we're talking about you need a family. Wow. Okay, so it's going to be very powerful. And also, um, I know you're going to be here Friday. What, yeah. what, what, Friday. what should we expect on Friday? Friday is a night of miracle explosions, Pastor. It's going to be a night of amazing miracles. We're talking about the miracle of staying in forward motion. Wow. It's very powerful. Plus all the miracles that are going to happen out there, and we're going to flow in the Holy Ghost and just watch God move. In, in signs and wonders. We're expecting a lot of people to get healed and to show up. Praise the Lord. Right. And you know what, what's really been happening on, on Friday nights? Friday nights have re has really been, I, I've, I've been describing it as a Holy Spirit bubble, a kingdom bubble. You're coming in and you're experiencing a lot of heaven here. A, a lot, lot of, of heaven. I, I just said little heaven. A lot of heaven on earth. A and, lot of heaven And, and then earth. Jesus said, that we should pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth the way it is in heaven. So right. it's always been God's will that we would not just go to heaven, but that we would experience heaven right. even here right. on this earth. Right. And every service that we've been coming to, we've been experiencing even more of God's power every time we come. And I, I want to just, just let you know, if, if you're a member of the Way World Outreach and you're hearing the right place to be on Friday night, unless for some reason you just can't make it, is here on Friday nights. There's nothing, we're not broadcasting Friday nights. So either you get it here or you don't. And, and it's kind of like what, what I've been thinking about is like the upper room when God called the disciples to don't leave Jerusalem, go to that room, get baptized with the Spirit. And I wonder if everybody actually went to that room or there was a lot of people that heard it and only 120 got right, there, right. but there was a lot of people that never got the experience right. of being in that upper room, not because the opportunity wasn't given to them. Right. For some reason, they talked themselves out of it. And, and what's, easy, what's really easy to do, especially in these times that we're living in today, it's real easy to begin to start developing habits that, are, that aren't, aren't leading to growth, aren't leading to increase. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of one another as some have the habit of doing. What he was saying is they used to come together and then they got a habit of not showing up. And I really right. believe that right now we're in right. danger of right. developing habits right. that do not produce godliness, do Amen. not produce miracles, do not produce growth in our lives. Mm -hmm. So this is what I want you to do. Even if you haven't ever showed up to a Friday night, we're having right around 2,000 people show up it's a really super safe event. No one's got COVID uh, you know, in these events. We, we ch temperature check everybody. People have to have masks when they come in. And, then, and, if, and we practice social distances in our seating. But, but when you come in, this is what you're going to experience. You're going to experience the atmosphere that you've been missing. You've been saying, man, there's something missing. I feel so empty. Friday night. And we're believing it's going to be a time of miracles miracles, miracles. Miracle explosions yeah. so when we're believing we're believing that so you come expecting a miracle It'd be relationship wise in your mind in your family get a miracle from god friday nights live here i would love to see you 
I, I think this Friday night could be our biggest Friday night. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Mm. You do not want to miss it. I really believe it's the biggest event that's happening Praise in Southern God. California right Praise now. Friday God. nights out here. Praise you don't want to miss it. There's like, Woo. what's going on? Friday night. Jesus. Fire Friday. Man. Show up. We'd love to see you here. Woo. Let's break through. And pretty soon also, we're going to start having live services here on Sunday morning. Um, we're going to start vamping up that, getting ready. We're getting our children's ready, ministry ready. We're going to start retraining, getting ready to reopen these doors. So write this, this date on your calendar, October 18th. Say it with me. October 18th. October 18th, we are going to open these doors with children's ministry, with youth ministry, live worship here, coming to the house of God. So we're going to have two services, 9 and 11. Not one yet. We're expanding to 1 o'clock later, but 9 and 11. So you want October 18th. You got it. We're about a month, a month away. We're going to have live services here. And what's going to happen, we're going to take the fire from Friday and bring it to Sunday. We're going to call Sunday Celebration Sundays. We've got Fire Fridays and Celebration Sundays. Are you guys ready for a word from God? Amen. You know, every time you come, you're just a blessing to our, our church. Your son, your family has been such a blessing to us. I thank God for our partnership. Our church would not be what it is today without your impartation that God has brought through your ministry. You, so get ready. I believe that today God is going to make sure that we realize we need a family. Yeah. And we're going to discuss the types of family yeah. that God wants us to have and make sure that we're participating because in family, you're going to experience the fullness of what God has for you. So get ready for the word of God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord, everybody. That was awesome. Don't you love Pastor Marco? I love him. He is a man of God. I love this church. And my son Gavin is crazy about you. I mean, this is like the number one church in the world. He just can't get enough of it. And I also have another one of my sons with me. Stand up, Judah. This is my son, Judah. My wife and I adopted him when he was about uh, 13 or so. He was uh, my wife's nephew. And we adopted him and his brother, praise the Lord, gave him new names, did the whole thing. So that's Judah Tate, man of God, a great, great son. I love him, a great musician, great singer, and just a powerful young man. And he just wanted to travel with me because he said, I just want to keep bonding with you and spend the time. And, you know, isn't that great when one of your children says that? So he likes me a lot and I like him a lot, so... God bless you. Thanks for coming with me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And my wife almost came. She, we, she had her ticket all ready to go. Then somebody in the family got COVID, and so she had to go take care of them. And uh, praise the Lord. But she's aching because uh, after Gavin, you know, he, he just, he tells, he tells his mom, he says, Mom, you got to go. It's like the greatest church in the world. So I'm excited. You know that God is doing something great here at the Way World Outreach. And one of the greatest things, I got this message this afternoon. Once I checked into the hotel, the Lord spoke this real clear to me and said, I want you to minister to the people on the importance of having a family. And you know, when you read your Bible, one of the first things God tells Adam is to reproduce multiply. And the Lord himself talks about himself as a father. When he talks about Jesus, he talks about him as a son. And so the Bible is full of parenting and a family language because he also said it's not good for people to be alone. And so this message is for everybody who has ever been alone who anybody that feels alone and any person that feels like they're not connected to a family because there is power in belonging to a family. And there are basically three kinds of family and we're going to talk about that. We're going to go to Psalm 68 and verse 6. God sets the lonely or the solitary in families. Praise God. He leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. 
Then it says, and this is really, really, really powerful. In Genesis 2 and verse 18, the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Exodus 20 and verse 12, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way they should go. Even when they're old, they won't depart from it. Uh, Colossians 3, 20, children obey your parents in everything for it pleases the Lord. First Timothy 5, 8, but if anyone does not provide for his family, and especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. 1 Timothy 3, 5, for if someone does not know how to manage his own house, how will he manage the kingdom of God? Genesis 2, 24, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Praise the Lord. These are all Bible verses that talk about family. Now, there are three kinds of family. First, your earthly family. That's the family you're born into. And that family can be anything. It can be full of murderers. It can be full of molesters. It can be full of abusers. That family can just have uh, one parent in it, a father or a mother, all different kinds of earthly families. And most of these families that are earthly families are not saved families. They're people that do not know God yet and do not serve God yet. God doesn't want your family to be an earthly family. He wants it to be a godly family. And so when God begins to draw you into his kingdom, he begins to teach you how to be a family member, how to find your place in the family of God, and that is your spiritual family. Because from your spiritual family comes your godly family, and from your godly family, you influence your earthly family to be converted and then be part of the spiritual what a lot of people do now is they're no longer going to church. They don't want to go to church. They're enjoying staying home. And a lot of them are developing the habits of disconnection from the powers of your spiritual family. You see, I have done this for 47 years, and I can tell you, one of the tricks of Satan is to get you offended at the church or somebody in the church so you won't be a part of the church so Satan can pick you off. He will pick you off because just like a predator, he separates you from the herd. And when you're alone, then all the predators surround you and begin to eat pieces of your soul and take it out of you. You can go to church and still not be a part of the family of God because you don't know how to make uh, the kingdom of God, the church, part of your family. You go there and maybe even visit there and maybe even work in the church and serve in the church. But because you have the heart of an orphan and the heart of a loner, you never connect to the family of God and draw from that family the blessings that come from being part of the family of God. See, a lot of people that are uh, Christians are still orphans. They were raised by parents who didn't know how to parent them, and they got a spirit of an orphan on them. And so an orphan is not someone who knows how to connect to a father or a mother, which the pastors are fathers and mothers. And so when they minister the word, they're not just ministering as ministers anointed by God, they're also ministering as parents, just like in a family. You can have a family with just a father, but it's a lot different when a mother talks. When you have both people speaking into a family, then you have a well-balanced family and a whole family. Even though when you are a single mother, God will take up the slack for you and give you grace during that time, but God wants you to know that he has a better place for you in your life. Praise the Lord. Everybody out there, just say to the people with you, I need a family. Most people that are in prison do not have a good family. Most of them do not have relationships with their fathers. 
They have, might have a relationship with their mother, but even at that, some of them don't have relationships with any family whatsoever. Once you no longer have a family, then evil can take charge of you and make you its disciple. Think about the words that I'm speaking. Once you have a family and you love that family, that existence of that family protects you from doing evil. There are many things I do not do that I have wanted to do that I don't do because I have the face of my wife and the face of my six children and the faces of my 15 grandchildren and that because of them, I am, I am bound and chained from my flesh being released to do what it wants. And it is the same way when you're in the family of God. The family of God will teach you how to die to yourself and how to serve and minister other people and how to walk in the fullness of the Holy Ghost and how to walk in the anointing of the Holy Ghost because you're part of the family of God, the spiritual family. You will develop a godly personal family that will go after the lost members of your earthly family and, 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 and bring them in until they are now part of the family of Almighty God. You see, those of you that are lonely, those of you that are uh, separated, those of you that never connect and bond to the spiritual house, the spiritual family, you can be tempted back into the world. Because without bonding, you don't feel other people's pain. It is when you love something that you no longer have the power to destroy it. But until you feel the pain of that thing you love, you are not going to check yourself from abusing that thing and from rejecting that thing and from abandoning that thing. And that is a very important thing these days. You see, the church, the family, is something that has to be loved. You have to bond with it. You have to become an intricate part of the daily life of it. You can't just go to church and listen. You've got to become an intimate part of the life of the church, the cells of the church, the movements of the church, the vision of the church, the loves of the church, the direction of the church. And that is the family of God. And that goes into your natural godly family because really the best family time is church time. You don't take family time away from God. You take family time in God. The best place to have your children is in church. You never say, well, we've been to church too much. We need to take a break. No, you say to your children, no, 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 no. Our family time is church time. Anything else we have, that's something else. But you, we're going to worship God together. We're going to hear the word of God together. We're going to praise Jesus together. We're going to win souls together. We're going to lay hands on the sick together. We're going to cast out devils together. We're going to prophesy together. That's what I've done with my family, and that's what you can do with your family, is once you get your family inside the actual workings of of the family of God, then your children no longer are vulnerable to the voice of the earthly families of this world. Then you'll never be part of the family of Satan. The family of Satan, which is any family that serves its flesh to any degree. If you are going to church but still smoke and drink and get drunk and getting high, then you have the calling of a family, but you still don't have the lifestyle of a family because you are still living under the dictates of Satan who is tempting you to walk in your flesh. When you come to the family of God, which is the church of God, that stuff will get broken off you and delivered. Somebody in the church will get a word of knowledge. Somebody in the church will say, let me ha lay hands on you. And that drinking problem will be broken forever without every, anybody ever knowing it. Because that's the power of a family. They can see what's going on in your life. They can sense it. They can feel it because they love you and because they're bonded to you and because they feel your pain they can say you're going through something you don't have to tell me let me just lay hands on you and get it broken off you praise the lord 
church has to be trivialized and minimized by Satan in order for all of its powers to be lifted off you and it just becomes a theater or a movie. So church for many people is let's go to church and it's the same as saying let's go watch a movie. You can shout, you can laugh, you can cry, you can have emotional advent, all that watching movies. But until you're in the movie, it's just a movie. And it's the same way with church. It's just a movie. Until you get involved in it and connected to it, and let it have authority over areas of your mind, soul, and over areas of your own choices. And it begins to lead and guide you into the things of the word of God. You see the family of God, say it out loud. I need a family. Everybody watching and out there at your house, just say, I need a family. Because you can have an earthly family and you can feel like I don't even have a family. I don't even belong to a family. This man beats me up. This woman yells at me. These children hate me. None of them obey. They're all rebellious. Everybody hates me. We all hate each other. We're screaming and yelling. We're threatening each other. Every other day she leaves. Every other minute he gets drunk. That's not a family. A godly family is where the man of God and the woman of God of the house are heroes of the family. They are looked up to and respected. When you look at that man, you say, that's my dad, and he's a man of God, and that's my mother, and she is a full of the Holy Ghost and discerning and full of the Spirit of God. They get people saved. They get people baptized in the Holy Ghost. They get people delivered, and they are amazing. That's what you want your children to say. And if you start bringing them to church, not visiting the theater, not just paying for the ticket with a little bit of money here and there, but you say, no, I'm joining the family. That's when the benefits start rolling out. Praise the Lord. When you love a thing, it begins to heal you. You can celebrate many things, but once you love something and say, that is mine and I am its, that is when the big changes begin to happen. You see, in the Bible, the family of God, which you and I need, is called many things. It's called a family. Praise the Lord. There's fathers and mothers and uncles and aunts and cousins and everything. It's called also a home. It is not an orphanage. It is a home. Praise the Lord. It is a vineyard where things are planted into you and you're cultivated and you're pruned and the words of God go inside your body and the juices of revelation and the wine of the spirit starts to grow inside you and you become a vine and you start producing a fruit and grapes and you start producing revelation which is the wine of the word of God is the revelation of the word of God and it is an ark where you can be safe from storms because the Bible says in Matthew 18 I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it the safest place you can be is the family of God and I've done this a long time all over the preached everywhere that you can think of in every kind of language. And I can tell you that it is the same everywhere. It is the loners that'll get picked off. The loners, the people who never become a part of the life and the inner life of the family of God. It is the same way in the family. If the father doesn't love those children and is not committed to that woman, he's going to find another woman and two or three or four or five of them. And he'll come home drunk whenever he wants because there's no covenant. There is no bonding. There is no relationship. But a man that loves his family will work as many hours as he has to to provide for the family and will spend quality time with the family and will nurture his family and say family let's read the word of God and let's talk about Jesus and the things of the kingdom of God and a mother will do the same thing come on children let's sing before we go to bed let's 
Jesus. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's go witnessing today. Because at any time you could get offended by one of your brothers and sisters. But if your brothers and sisters offend you, you don't just kick them out. But I've learned this in 47 years. You don't know who your friends are until you offend them. Yeah, you'll know when you offend them who you are in their eyes. Because if they never talk to you again, you know that you were not as valuable as you thought you were. But somebody that loves you says, man, you just offended the living daylights out of me. Well, let's work it out then. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean it to come across that way. That's just not how I feel or think. Okay, all right, I forgive you. All right, let's forget it and let's keep going. That's a relationship. That's a family. My wife has offended me 10 hundred thousand million jillion times. And I have offended her many more than that. I have offended every child I have. Many times. They have offended me many times. I still have them all. My wife and I are still married 44 years. But she could have left me a thousand times for a thousand reasons. Oh, wow. The, you left the... Uh, the toilet paper thing empty, Ivan, again, after 25 years. She could have left just for that. <laughs> but when you love someone and they're part of your family, you take responsibility for them. This is something Cain wouldn't do. He killed his brother and then said, what do I have to do with him? He's, I'm not his keeper. Yes, we are. When you're a part of a family, yes, you are. You're responsible for how your wife feels. You're responsible for how your husband feels and your children. And this is it. Everybody say it together again. I need a family. Say it. I need a family. I need brothers and sisters. If you have a godly family, praise God right now that you have a godly family. Lift up your hands and praise God and say, oh, praise God, I have a godly family because you're way ahead of a lot of people right now. But I can guarantee you at the way world outreach, there are still a lot of men, women, and children that have no family. They're just on the outskirts and they want to have a family. They want to be able to say, I have a godly family. And that's what this church is dedicated to doing is to turning the earth into the godly and eventually into the spiritual weapons in the hands of almighty God. Can somebody look at somebody and say, praise God, I love Jesus. Orphans are very powerful because they are so separated from everything. An orphan does not trust anybody. An orphan does not bond with anybody. An orphan is always alone even when he's with people. An orphan has no ability to understand or communicate from the heart. They are emotionally de disconnected from everything. They do not believe anybody really loves them. They do not believe that they are truly wanted. And they have rage on the inside of them. They are independent, and whenever there's pressure or stress, they leave, they take off, and they would rather be alone than with people. That is, and our churches are full of them. You need a family. If you've come out of prison, you need a family. You don't need to just go to church. You need to become part of the family. You need to become part of the family of God so that the gates of hell will no longer prevail against you. You say, well, I'm all alone. It's only temporary, my brother. It's only temporary, hermana. It's only for a little while. The Holy Spirit is going to give you a family when you are worth and when you are worthy of being a father and worthy of being a mother. He will give you a godly family. But you've got to be a man of God and a woman of God, and you're not going to do that on your own.
You need the rest of these men and the rest of these women to help you walk the road that is going to be very painful and very hurtful. And you're going to have to die to everything that your selfish flesh wants in order to become a godly man that is not a selfish person and a godly woman that doesn't just run her mouth anytime she gets offended, but is in control because you have a covenant with Jesus and a covenant with God and you watch what comes out of your mouth and you are responsible for what you think and say and do to other people because you're in a family and you realize it is part of the big family of Almighty God because God's job is to adopt all the orphans of the entire world and bring them into a family called the family of God and I prophesy that next year will be the biggest year of growth for this church ever in the history of the entire church it's going to blow up and people are going to come from everywhere all over the place because of the Holy Ghost calling them out of the dark earthly families of death drugs Abuse, division, divorce, violence, brokenness, emptiness into the house of God. Everybody say it out loud. I love my family. Praise the Lord. Tell three people around you that's what I'm talking about. There are no orphans in heaven. Praise the Lord. I will, I will uh, Matthew 7, 24 says, if you build your house on sand, rain, wind, and floods will knock it down. If you build it on a rock, the rock, it will withstand anything that can be thrown against it. Two are better than one. One will set to flight a thousand, but two will set to flight 10,000. You see, some of you are very independent because that is a sign of an orphan. You're independent. You don't need anybody. It's taken you your whole life to become like that, where you're untouchable, you're unreachable, and you're unhurtable. And you think you have accomplished a big thing. You have. You have become a disciple of darkness. Satan's job is to make you stand alone and convince you you do not need anybody. And that is a disciple of Satan. A godly man is not like that. A godly woman is not like that. They say, no, I love my pastor. I'm going to do what he says. I love his him every day. I'm going to get on my knees and protect them with prayer. I'm going to protect my brothers and my sisters, and I'm going to serve the body of Christ with joy, and I'll have no competition and no ambition, and I'll have no alternative motives, no alter, uh, uh, no insecurities. I will have no fears and I will just be secure and trust God with my future because I know that the Lord is going to allow me and promote me as I just serve people with no agenda because I'm part of the family of God. What do you want me to do, pastor? Can I clean the church? I know of three pastors that were the former janitors of the church. But because of 20 years or more of cleaning the church and attending all services and praying for everybody and being loyal all the time and never getting offended and never getting uh, a heavy head or a, a big head or pride, they just served in humility that when they were appointed the head pastor and went from 30000 to 300000 salary, everybody stood up and cheered and wept because they've watched a true man of God and a true child of God just love people and serve people with no agenda because they were just glad they had a family now and they were not alone. <laughs> Tell somebody in your home right now, wherever you are listening, I need a family. The Way World Outreach 
is not just an institution. It's a family. Praise the Lord. It's a family. Go ahead and give somebody a high five if you're in the building and just say, could you give me $100, my brother? <laughs> so let's talk about, as we shut down, let's talk about why you need a family and a spiritual family. Number one, so that you can be cleansed from all your wicked sin. Turn to two people and say, híjole, that's a hard one. <laughs> you see, church is not where you hide your flesh from people. Church is when you let people say, hey, I got this problem. And your family's not going to go broadcast it all over town. They say, no, this is between me and you. My son tells me things. You think I'm going to go tell everybody? Oh, this is what my son told me today. Blah, 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 blah. He murdered three people and buried them over at the, at the Wendy's. No, he's going to tell me in private. And we will deal with it in private. And it'll never be seen or known because that's what family does. There's a cleansing that happens when you go to a family. But when you're not part of the family, you'll go to church and hide your sins and sit on them for 10 or 20 years. And then when you leave the church, you pull out the reefer, you pull out the cocaine, you're going to pull out the pornography, you'll pull up all the sin in line, you'll throw the finger at people on the highway, you'll cuss and do everything else and every other perverted thing that you've always done because you are not really a member of the family. And so it's the Holy Ghost that comes in church and start blowing the wind of the Spirit and cleansing all that stuff out of you and nobody ever gets to know that you even had the problem. Just by sitting in the family, the breath of God blows through and blows the devil right out of your life and out of your future family's life. Praise God. And then your sons and daughters don't grow up watching their dad get drunk and watching him beat up their mother. You see, when you come to the family of God, here's where you learn love. Unconditional, unbiased love for every kind of person on planet Earth. Red, yellow, black, and white. Rich and poor. Good and bad. The good, the bad, and the ugly. You learn it right here. Church, the real family, doesn't teach you racism and prejudice. Any church that does that, they're all going to hell. All of them. There are no races in heaven. Anybody that hates a person for the way they look is going straight to hell. They're all going to hell. Now, you can hate people you know. Uh-oh, that sounded like heresy. No, you do. I hate people all the time. But I only hate them for a few seconds. But I do hate them. I get on my knees when I feel that hate because I'm not going to let it take root because God told me hate is how you make Satan your pastor. And I am not going to have Satan as my pastor. But yes, I will feel hate when they molest one of those little children and open them up with bottles. Yes, I am going to hate that person for a little bit. But I have the fear of God and I will fall on my face and say, God, I am not going to let hate take root because I am not the disciple of Satan and he is not my pastor. You see, it's the church where you learn the love of God, the family of God. Here at church is where you learn protection. Here's where you're protected. Here's where the demons can't get to you. At church is where you learn to be secure about your walk with God and your family. At church is where you learn, and it's very important, how to walk in the fullness of the giftings of God that he has put in your life. Here is where you learn how to love God and how to love people, how to know God, how to belong, how to nurture. Here is where you're trained in your spiritual destiny gifts. 
Here in the family of God is where you get your encouragement and where you get your inheritance and your equipping and your power and your calling and your vision and your anointing and your purpose. And here is where you learn companionship with other people and you learn how to be transparent and honest and not be a liar anymore. This is where we learn divine order, generational blessings, how to serve and how to give. It's in the family of God. The family of God will give you a godly family and go rescue your earthly family until everybody in your earthly family is part of the family of God creating new godly families where the presence of God can abide. Praise the Lord. Look around at everybody and say, I need a family. Come on, everybody out there watching, say it out loud, I need a family. I hope that I have stirred you up to understand that your church is supposed to be your family. It's the body of Christ where your every joint supplies because remember if no blood gets to that part of the body it withers down and drops off and that's why if you're going to be a loner then you're on the clock you're on the clock just like the draft you're on the clock just a matter of time till you get picked off your old life will start calling your old friends will start calling. Your old demons will start calling. And your old death will be waiting. And the grim reaper does not spare the lives of backslidden Christians. He is waiting not to hurt you. No. He is waiting to kill you. Because he realizes you're giving him a chance by stepping out of the circle of protection which is the family that God has given you. Don't you dare stay away from church on October the 16th. Don't say, oh, I'm, I'm tired. Estoy muy cansada, no quiero ir. Don't do that. Say, I'm going in, I don't care. Drag me in if you have to. I'm going to church. That's my family. I'm not going to get a habit of just laying on, uh, 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 <laughs> on, uh, on, uh, on my behind. And, and just, uh, I'm rising up. I'm going to church. I'm going to church on October the 18th. Is that right, Pastor? I said 16, but October the 8th. Well, get here two days early. On October the 18th. Praise the Lord. Say, I'm waiting outside. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait outside because there's going to be a big line. Thousands of people are coming on October the 18th, and they're bringing people with them. They're bringing the lost and the blind and the lame and the sick and the deaf. They're bringing the leper. They're bringing everybody on October the 18th, and everybody's going to get saved in those two services. You watch how big it is and how many people get saved on October the 18th by the power of God because when you have a family it hurts you when someone you meet doesn't have a family and you say come on and I'll give you a family because some of you don't have a family you'll never have one without it God has to create a family for you praise the Lord now I want you to give somebody a high five that's next to you or throw it at them or whatever you want to do and say I will stop being independent. I will not be rebellious. I will not attack my spiritual father and my spiritual mother. Would you do that to your own dad or mom if you love them? Listen, I never talked back to my mother one single day of my life even when I was a sinner because she was so loving and sweet. I would never want to hurt her. I never told her any of the sins that I was committing because I knew it would break her heart. And when I got saved 
after about three years of not talking to me, she said, every time you hug me and cry on me, I just feel this wonderful peace. I have to have what you have. Tell me about Jesus. And I got to lead my mother to Jesus. And then my brothers came. And then my other brothers came. Then my sisters came. And that's how it goes, baby. Because when you're part of the family of God, he'll give you a godly family. And then he'll rescue your earthly family and turn them into weapons for almighty God. Once you belong to the family of God, but until you do, your family is still vulnerable to the predators. But once you become part of the greatest family in the universe with millions of brothers and sisters in it of every tongue and language, Language, until you become part of the family of God by getting involved with that, you are still vulnerable. Everybody close your eyes and let's pray. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus loves us enough to give us good brothers and good sisters. I have been in the body of Christ since 1972. I have had my heart broken many times by so-called brothers and so-called sisters. But I know that no brother of mine would try to steal my wife. And no sister of mine would try to steal me. They are not true brothers and sisters. And there will always be fake brethren. But don't you be one of them. Friday night is a night of explosions of miracles and power. And so tonight, I'm going to pray. And everyone that's out there, I'm going to give you a chance to become part of the family of God. Close your eyes with me. And say this prayer out loud. If you're at your home, get on your knees. If you've been a rebel, independent, if you've said the words, I don't need anybody, those people don't care about me. If you've used the language of an orphan, why don't you let God adopt you tonight? Why don't you let Jesus adopt you and say, I'm afraid of getting hurt. Turn that up and just close your eyes and pray this. Say, dear Jesus, would you save my life? Would you come and live in my heart and write my name in the Lamb's book of life? Oh, Jesus, would you wash me in your blood and cleanse me and purify me? And let me walk with you all the days of my life. I turn my back on Satan I will not make him my uh, pastor or my family. I belong to the family of God. This day, Jesus, I will change the way I think and be part of the family of God. Thank you, Lord, that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. I'll serve you till the day I die. And I love you with all of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, everybody, we'll see you on Friday. God bless you, and here's your pastor. Wow. How many enjoyed that word? I mean, you're here. I mean, you know, when, when we bring speakers in, we, we don't discuss anything that's happening in the church, and we never discuss anything, period. And we don't discuss what we want them to preach. What, what I want them to do is I want them to hear from God and then bring us a message that they've received from God for us. And I really, you know, he, he, he actually got this message like right before service. He goes, I got a message. I'm writing it down right now for the church. And it's about family. And... And I think sometimes we look at church as, like he said, an institution. It's just, it's something that I choose to um, go to, uh, be entertained with. And, 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 and we're looking at the, 
the musicians and the singers and the preaching. And, and I think I like that church because I like the way they sing or I like that church because I like the way he preaches. And, but what God is saying, it's way, way, way more than that. It's family. It's a relationship. And when we're committed to each other in a relationship, it's not performance-based. Because there's going to be days that everything looks good. But you know in family, everything isn't always good. That means there's misunderstandings. There's, there are people get offended. Um, we have shortcomings. Everything is all, isn't always clean and tidy and neat. But that's the time that we prove that we're family. We don't get offended out of a family. This is what we do. We forgive each other to stay in the family, right? I have a family. And, and this, I've always said this, that I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here until Jesus comes back. Right here in San Bernardino. I'm not saying we're not starting churches you know, all over the world, but I'm always going to be here right here in San Bernardino with my family and it's so interesting our, our saying that we say every time you come we, every service once you come once you are now part of the family so I think we need to now as we've gotten this word we need to have a little bit or a lot more family awareness and what you by that is first of all we're part of a godly family we have a father and we're his children and then we're part of a family here and we're committed to each other and we're devoted to each other. And we serve in the house of God. And we learn how to overcome together as a family. So, and we understand this, the devil's job is to get us isolated from the family and pick us off. So that's how it works. Isolation, and I'm going to pick you off. And, then, and we have to like resist this spirit of independence because it's actually a spirit of fear. I'm independent, but you're scared. You're scared of being hurt. And that's what's stopping you from, from getting close. So I'd rather just keep away and not get real close and not get really committed and not be vulnerable because I don't want to get hurt. So the independence is not really independence. It's this fear or it's almost, I would say this, an insecurity. So it, this is a time to let go of all that, love each other. Let's make this, I really believe, I love our church. I'll tell you why, because it's real. If you have issues, who cares? We all have issues. Who cares? I, I, don't, I don't care really what anybody's done. It really doesn't matter to me. Let's just deal with it. Let's be forgiven. Let's find out the root cause of why you did it. And let's overcome together. That's it. That's what we're here to do. You know, but, but, I've, but this last thing I'm going to say is that when we, when we choose not to be part of family, we choose not to be honest, we choose not to be close to each other, and we choose not to, we're choosing not to open up. And this is what happens. Then we choose to be critical. So when we're not part of family, we become extra critical. We're, because we always see ourselves as an outsider. Critical. You know, back, you know, back in the day, like you could talk about anybody, but don't you talk about my mama. Don't you talk about my family. I take that personal. But I, and I think we, and I think we've taken some of that, like we, we just, not really, we, we, we're allowing stuff to be said about each other that we're just saying, no, don't you talk about my brother. Don't you talk about my sister. I take that personally. Right? And let's deal with it. Let's talk to each other. So I am so proud of every one of you that tuned in. Wasn't this a great word? This is what I would recommend you to do. Um, this, this word is going to be online again. What I would recommend for you to do is listen to it slowly and start taking notes. Um, there's a lot of things that were said about maybe attributes of an orphan spirit. And you can start saying, wait, wait a second. Maybe I have some of those attributes in my life. And it's okay. Because the purpose is to expose it so we can get healed from it. I understand? Healed and allow yourself to be loved. Allow yourself to be loved. Would you say this with me even online? I receive love. Allow yourself to receive love. Okay? from your pastors, from your leaders, from your husband, from your wife. Because some of you have been, like, you've, you've developed such a wall that if someone even tries to hug you, you cringe and you push them away and you're not allowing yourself to be loved. 
And the only way you're going to be healed is with the love of God. That's it. There's nothing else that will heal you. The drug you're taking, the pill you're taking, the extramarital affair, the thing that you're doing as an escape, none of that will heal your hurt. Your anger won't fix it. Fighting won't fix it. Running won't fix it. None of it's going to fix it. What you need is love. And there's a time you got to say, Lord, forgive me for not allowing you to love me and not allowing the people around me to love me. I'm going to allow you to love me and I'm going to allow people to, uh, you to love me through people. Are you ready to do that? This Friday, I'd love to see you here. I mean, I wish I could just hug everybody. I don't know. I mean, if you let me hug, I'll, call, I'll hug you. On, on Friday, I dare you to come. I'll hug you. But I'd love for you to be here this Friday. Let's come together as a family. And let's see what God has to say. It's going to be, when we're united, this is going to be an amazing time Friday. A time of miracles and healing. Today, you haven't seen nothing to, You haven't seen nothing yet. Friday is going to be Miracle Friday or, or Fire Friday. So love you. God bless you. If you just gave your life to the Lord, go online to igotsaved.com. igotsaved.com. And we'll help you with your next step of being part of the family. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing next two days. Friday, we'll all be here together. Love to see you here. Love you guys. God bless you. Hello, everyone. What a powerful message. And on behalf of the Wayward Outreach, we just want to say we love you. But most importantly, God loves you. And if that word spoke to you today, make sure you help us get this message out by liking, commenting, and sharing this YouTube channel. God bless you all. See you next time.